All right, let's take what we've just learned and apply it to a pop country rhythm. Now look at this uh, window here, and this is our arrange window uh, for arranging the different sounds that we're going to be listening to. And notice that I have here a pop country loop, let's say, and I'll bring it up, and here it is right down here. Let's go ahead and listen to this pop country loop. All right, uh, pretty standard rhythm, a pretty basic rhythm. Uh, here it is uh, indicating beat one of measure three. Notice that we have this loop starting on measure three of our song. Uh, we have 16 measures showing up thus far. All right, now we'll take a look again at our pulse. And here it is again. And notice down here, if you can see that, we have 82 beats per minute. Okay, so we're listening to, we're going to start off with our pulse for the first two measures over eight beats. <clears throat> and then this pop country rhythm will fit right into that pulse. What I want you to try to do is keep track of the beats, count through the pulse, and then when we get to here, that pop country rhythm is going to kick in, and then you just continue to keep that pulse in your head or tap it on your foot or tabletop or whatever. All right, let's go back here, take a look. Uh, well, since we have this audio window open here, let's take a look at what we've got going on. You can see where the accents are occurring visually. Here's beat one. Notice that our loop starts here at beat one. And we've opened it up and this is what we're looking at here. Uh, and then we have an accent here which is uh, beat one of measure one. I'm sorry, beat two, three, and four. So we have you can see visually that we have major accents on beats two and four. Now these accents here, you're going to hear are have less emphasis. So notice how that works in the rhythm. Let's start. Well, let's just play this pop rhythm by itself first. All right. How many different sounds did you notice there? Play it one more time. Okay, there are three different sounds going on. First, you have a loud sound, which is fairly high-pitched, and that's represented by uh, this signal here. And notice that the height of the signal is much greater than this, indicating that it's louder in volume, hence more of an accent. Okay. So we could call this maybe the dominant accent, although generally speaking, in rock, the bass drum does carry the main accent, even though it's louder or, or not as loud. Okay, so for argument's sake, let's just say that this bass is the main accent. This is the secondary accent here, here, and here. And notice these chick sounds. You hear them here, 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 and here. They're also playing here, here, and here over the bass and the snare drum. This is the snare drum. This is the bass drum. But you don't hear them. They're lost in the sound of the bass and the snare, but they are there. This is your pulse, and it's similar to the pulse that we have. It, well, it's exactly the same here. So actually, in a rare occurrence, well, it doesn't happen often, but you do have one instrument that is assigned the task of playing the pulse. 
that is the individual beats of the pulse, which makes it easy to follow. And rock rhythms are easy, intended to be followed in an easy way. Okay, let's start the whole thing. Here's your tempo. Uh, well, here's your pulse. Now we're in measure two. Here's where the pop country is. Okay, see if you can do that again. And I'll loop it this time. Uh, let's go here and we'll loop it. And make sure what I want you to do here is try to follow the pulse. Keep it in your head. That pretty much is how a rhythm breaks down.